starting anyway, which is already quarter past six. So uh, today's lecture topic is digital running. We're going to be covering um, quite a few issues as regards digital trends and the impact of running from every run management, uh, as well as some of the key tools that are available to a digital marketer from an every point of view, for example, the impact of brand content uh, and brand communities on brand equity and how to manage and still insights from these particular uh, digital marketing methods. Um, now, in order to understand, based on what we've been discussing so far during the previous lectures, what's different in the digital environment and digital era, Let's go through some of the key trends and discuss consumer behavior, the impact of technologies on branding and brand equity, and uh, what kind of different methods are available to marketers for distilling insights and making actionable the participation of, of uh, uh, and the cooperation of brand meaning with the participation of consumers. Uh, starting from major digital trends, first of all, uh, what to know that social media presents unique capabilities as compared to traditional media. And this, this difference is summed up in a transition from one to many communications to one to one and finally in the web whole environment in many, many communications. A sharp increase in buying via online retail channels, which is uh, sustainable uh, as we have seen so far post-COVID. Um, a major shift in realizing promotion expenditures towards digital channels, as we'll see in greater detail in lecture seven. An increasing consumer empowerment and control over message exposure, content, and mode of interaction to such an extent uh, as uh, to have a redefined bottom-up uh, fundamental methods and concepts such as position, instrumentation, and targeting. And the emergence at the same time of the so called fifth year marketing, according to Solomon, that is participation. And finally, major changes in the consumer decision making journey. Uh, the uh, type alone AIDA model, as we know it, is by now extinct. And we're concerned mostly with looping non linear, non linear, and overlapping phases in the consumer making journey. Now, let's look at uh, what each of the strengths in turn and greater detail, starting from the impact of technologies or marketing. According to a recent study by Hoffman et al. that was published in 2022, uh, the, um, major, um, uh, the, the major impact uh, of new technologies or marketing decision making concerns the ability to uh, gather large volumes of data through big data mechanisms and to order to generate insights based uh, on these big data collection methods in real time. This in turn has enabled a greater level of cooperation of brand meaning. And finally, the uh, great rate of market innovation in terms of personalized promotions and personalized communications. So everything is uh, moving towards a direction where the once considered dream of one-to-one -one marketing is finally become real. Of course, there are always pitfalls to this one to one marketing um, predicament you will see in, uh, in this lecture. And starting from uh, the uh, evolution of marketing communications from the traditional model of uh, one to many, featuring traditional media like mass media, uh, outbound messaging, attention, game the orientation, audio, so on and so forth, towards um, one-to-one internet-based communication, including email marketing uh, and mainly the ability of not only first speaking with consumers in person on a one-to-one -one basis, but also consumers uh, responding by um, asking for more um, clarifications and establishing a dialogue. However, what still was missing from this traditional marketing phase was the ability of consumers to interact among themselves alongside the third, which is the third phase of the evolution of market communications, that is the man-to-man -man model. Uh, this is the world to world era, 
as you can see on the uh, upper part of this uh, graph, uh, the internal medium is characterized not only by interaction between firm and consumers, but also among consumers themselves. And this is the um, main territory of uh, social media uh, and the ability of uh, consumers to uh, create their own pathway towards the firm rather than the other way around. Uh, so in a nutshell, social media technological platforms present new communication opportunities but also constraints. For example, Twitter has a message left of 140 characters. Facebook is the ideal for brand community building. Uh, YouTube is the ideal for video marketing. There are specific opportunities for those constraints on its medium. Planning to amend the monitoring the results of social media campaigns has become equally complex to traditional above the line with and below the line through the line communications. In terms of planning, opportunity, ample opportunities for micro and narrow targeting based on actual behavioral patterns in social media community settings. In terms of implementation, there are opportunities for enhanced consumer engagement with brand values through relevant presence in online communities. And finally, with uh, the advent of listening technologies, as we'll see in greater detail in lecture 10, nowadays we are building brands and we are building to monitor brand engagement in real time in the online communities and to revise advertising and reduce performance on the fly. Um, there has been, at the same time, as the communication, as the evolution of the communication landscape, an evolution in uh, uh, the online retail and commerce landscape. Uh, by now, retailing has been taken over exponentially with brick and mortar quarter retailers. Uh, however, at the same time, retailers have been recognizing that physical presence is still significant, uh, which has um, incited some of them to set up temporary physical stores. Uh, that is, physical stores and very mobile brands as well, high street brands. They maintain the lease uh, space for six months, for example, for a big launch. They transform this into a full flesh shop and then move on. Uh, in 2007, Amazon uh, acquired the grocery store giant Whole Foods for 40 billion. Uh, this is the uh, evolution of the uh, inverse, that is, um, a traditional retailer expanding into the regional territory. And finally, the pandemic has contributed greatly to the acceleration of the adoption of uh, e commerce habits as a dominant price mode. Uh, expansion wise, as of 2017, uh, digital media has taken over traditional media. Uh, 2009 billion for digital ad spending versus 170 billion for TV advertising worldwide. And the growth of digital media is expected to outpace growth of traditional media channels by 2024. Uh, in 2020, online channels uh, were 50% larger than TV advertising. So, not only there has been a shift in communication uh, modes towards the main domain model. But this is reflected, of course, in the uh, marketing expansion and investment in, the, uh, in media. Uh, at the same time, there has been increased consumer empowerment and control over message exposure, content, and mode of interaction. Um, nowadays, there is ample available software for blocking and advertising, but also reporting messages that consumers did in Bergman, in social media, for example, YouTube and Facebook. The online environment is uh, pretty much clever, which means that uh, uh, marketers uh, are in, uh, always in need of adopting flexible media planning tactics. Uh, content is still key. Brand marketers need to provide continuously relevant and unique content consumers. In the context of online brand communities, for example, bespoke context, exclusive offers, exclusive information about new product launches and other campaigns. Another paraphernalia, for example, the readers was giving away backstage passes to uh, private parties that were organizing uh, an experiential campaign. Uh, the products of the uh, Marias Brothers uh, um, launch. Consumers have formed uh, this context from past place recipients to active participants in sharing advertising messages. 
uh, it's a it's what's called collaborative brand memory. That is, uh, consumers post their own um, experiences and from the relationship with brands, but at the same time, they absorb the experiences that have been posted by the consumers. And this kind of osmosis creates a collective brand memory. Um, uh, consumers post regular selfies from brand sponsor events to social media. So it's a way of uh, socializing on a brand uh, based platform. Uh, and the rise of the so called gift and sharing, especially the sharing economy, has been actively leveraged by brands in order to render, uh, to, to render themselves part of peer to peer communications rather than impersonal communicators. Redefinition of uh, fundamental concepts, positioning, segmentation, and targeting. Uh, once we as uh, we is called the mutable laws of positioning, that is, what you have one position and you stick to it, um, in a sense, dogmatically, and you don't have to be glad from your main position, no matter what, uh, regardless of whether like external risk environment or media consumption habits are changing radically. This is not the case anymore. Uh, consumers. Brands uh, are um, supposed to be changing uh, in line with changing uh, communicating modes, but also the content that is posted, especially the content that the modes of the mode of association that are made of consumers in line media. Um, according to Kotler, uh, there's still scope for adopting coherent positioning over time. However, the imagery is shifting at a considerably greater rate. Uh, compared to the first phase of brand communication, that was the main one, the main model. Uh, at the same time, the communication consistency across channels is uh, getting more and more difficult, uh, due precisely to the ability of consumers to engage in active appropriation. Uh, segmentation of value has been a major shift from uh, fixed demographic values and lifestyle parameters towards emerging consumer typologies that stem from real-time interaction with brand and content. This is not new uh, as regards the um, emergence of these typologies with the advent of um, the new media. It has, this has been more often than not the case with direct marketing, where vendors uh, used to uh, uh, modul modulate their databases in as fancy, you know, as, as many possible fancy cool models as well could imagine in order to render the databases more relevant to the narrow targeting criteria that were set by uh, marketers. Nevertheless, uh, this uh, segmentation basis, this shifting segmentation basis, uh, especially on social media, we're getting uh, more and more uh, minute and customizable according to the needs of each marketer. Uh, so, online communities are the new segment, according to Kotler. Uh, Concomitantly, targeting criteria shift from individual consumers to online communities, and uh, these targeting criteria are defined by social network dynamics, relationships between followers, influencers, and leaders. And connectivity is a new mantra uh, that is horizontally connected networks that consist of these uh, three uh, kinds of uh, interactions, so as leaders, influencers, and followers. Um, this shifting communicative landscape has um, urged Kotler to call it the new four C's of marketing. It's a transition from interdition for peace, that is, cooperation, currency, conversation, and communal activation. Cooperation designates that consumers actively participate. Shaping the, the image and the uh, meaning of brands. There are collaborators that are passive recipients. The centralized control of brand meaning by the marketing function is eroding. And user generated content advertising can become mainstream for promo vehicles. Currency pricing becomes increasingly dependent on real time brand behavior, for example, the Amazon model, which adopts a dynamic pricing uh, route based on shipping map variables. Of course, there's, oh, there are also uh, testers in, uh, in the fiscal retail environment with uh, pricing strategies, for example, quarterly examples in the LPFDA low price. But this is a much more advanced phase 
that works on with uh, mass algorithms and uh, then to Carcros versus uh, other product categories as well. Uh, conversation that explains the consumers are more prone to seek advice and recommendations about products or services uh, from the network peers. And there is less reliance on other communications, as noted by um, Weaverland uh, in one of the books that I have learned on my level, and book is also uh, suggesting a secondary literature. Uh, the proclivity of uh, consumers to seek uh, advice and information from their peers, the brand proclivity of brand to brand originating information uh, in those uh, in that are made content with authenticity, is perceived as more authentic, as more real than contrived communication. Of course, the more a medium advances, the more it tends to uh, be banned. So, what is regarded as authentic. Uh, uh, face value, the more uh, consumers will be exposed to it, the more critical they will get the, the, the kind of words video, which tends to be the case with all media. And finally, community activation, consumers become increasingly dependent on multiple social networks in their purchase and use decision making. And brand activation and engagement are recruitment of living relationships with online community leaders. Uh, again, the uh, leader, follower, inclusive model that is definitely with interaction, defined with interaction with social media. Uh, at the same time, there have been changes in the consumer decision making journey. The traditional purchase funnel, in terms of the idea steps of one's interest, desire action is by now obsolete. And we have equally boxes. Equally start standing uh, um, in terms of a process that uh, may move randomly from one step to another, or even more so simultaneously between steps. And this attributed to the fact that the online context produces conditions in which consumers may move from the steps in no particular sequence with the information about the brand's impact and decision making journey at any stage. For example, uh, I can uh, see a brand for the first time, uh, but uh, because of the fact that someone else whom I trust engages with, it, engages with his content positively, I'm quite inclined to try some of the information at the same time, uh, move on their website, and I find an offer. And this may work all, you know, the exactly the opposite way that is. I come across an offer about a product, which I don't know much yet, but uh, I discover at the same time that one of my trusted peers in my social community has been writing, has been posting, posting comments about it, so uh, I choose best. So all the steps tend to intermingle in no particular order in online environment, as against more traditional decision making processes. That that was the case with the AIDA model. Uh, there has been a dramatic increase in consumer touch points. As we'll be seeing greater detail, there has been a, 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 complexity, a, a complexification of media planning, precisely due to the proliferation of consumer touch points. Uh, managers have orchestrated these various channels to bring them the great structure across the consumer decision journey. Uh, otherwise, they'll get lost. And we're going to see a very nice case study from Domino's. Uh, and why this is a very interesting case study? Because Domino's uh, communicated their offers precisely by uh, announcing that it's, uh, their pizzas are available on all these different platforms at the same time in the same message. So this became uh, quite a hit. Of course, there was the first time that someone was, was emphasizing not uh, the same, not just customizing the message by menu, but emphasizing with, emphasizing the same message, the availability of media, as it has the all possible touch points that consumers may use for uh, uh, servicing content and ordering their pizza. Uh, and we're going to see this in greater detail in the next several. And at the same time, the have to ensure that brands have a unified message 
and the processing room and fill across platforms. Of course, this is the uh, main purpose of brand equity. The question is whether this uh, scenario can be sustained uh, in a web to wall environment. Now, in order to, to answer this question, whether this trend is uh, sustainable, we have to understand what's from enough and allow called the hyperconnected hyper world. The hyperconnected world designates uh, networks of people, devices, and other entities that are continuously interacting and changing information in the context of the Internet of Things or brand assemblages. That is, uh, we don't have um, any longer the traditional causal chain that, po that posits the uh, human agent as the, as the very center of the uh, entire process. The human is, within this internet of things, is within a broader chain where agentic status is also held by inanimate objects. For example, the refrigerator, the interactive refrigerator has the, uh, the ability to automatically order uh, some, you know, some of the products that it senses, whose uh, stock it senses, needs to be replenished. So, in this case, the human does not participate at all in the reordering process. So, the repair stage is completely skipped. It's not only skipped, but it's performed by the refrigerator itself. And uh, this is enabled by infrastructure. Uh, a social network that includes the retailer who's fulfilling the order, the fridge that's placing the order, and the human who simply consumes the products that have been ordered. Uh, so, in this hyper connected world, people uh, do not hold the self uh, uh, stage as a decision making anymore. Uh, at the same time, what some method of now call learning and programming or planning designates from a learning point of view that the boundaries um, between uh, consumers and markets have become uh, not as discreet as they used to be. This is why they call them porous boundaries, because there's porosity in this kind of, kind of, uh, this kind of boundary. And this is called the pro this field of the platformization of brands. Uh, most of these platforms, for example, Amazon, Uber, uh, LinkedIn, Airbnb, they're branded, but the brand associations are not stem from a communication, it rather stems from interactions of multiple player contributing the creation, delivery, or the brand experience. So the uh, brand image of these platformized brands is constantly co created by the people who interact on these platforms, rather than uh, following the original route of one to many, who's uh, making a message and then it's, and then it's uh, received by um, many consumers without any ability to cooperate as they see fit. And the problem of branding, an experiment, key example for the problem of branding, is the so-called person brand, uh, which is very uh, popular in YouTube, for example, where the experience emergence of a, uh, a new cohort of ordinary stars or person brands. For example, uh, Fury Speed, a competitive leader, uh, who's uh, also running his own business, is producing uh, uh, supplements, is producing uh, apparel, and he's a, a champion in competitive bidding. Does everybody know being on this competitive bidding? Hello, hello, can you hear me? Oh, Hi, hi. we can hear you. Mr. Massey, Ms. Bika? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Hello. Mr. Maldonado, can you hear me? Yes, sorry, I couldn't open the mic. Okay, Mr. Hadjis? Yes. Oh, for the minute, Mr. Hadjis. It's a 
very fortunate process of building a brand as we have analyzed it so far and the traditional way of distilling brand equity sites have been replaced by more transient model of value creation among interconnected devices but no requirements labeling and branding so it's like machine machines taking over at the end of the day and if it is so if the importance of brand diminishes what kind of mechanism will displace brand equity in order to induce the much cherished and required loyalty and trust in consumers? <coughs> One answer uh, to this standardized question, which is on top of markets in general right now, is what has been called the model, what has been called by Adamo Swami and Obza, visualized interactive platforms or DIPs. Uh, this is a case where consumers are implicitly finding themselves in joint enactments of interaction of value creation through offerings of involved digitalized network arrangements of artifacts, persons, processes, and interfaces. In this case, value is created through interactions rather than simply exchanging a fixed offering within a firm and its context, its customers. So the um, time handled concept of exchange which lies at the heart of marketing, that is, you exchange an amount of money. And in, uh, for a product or a service is no longer the primary, is no longer the context where value is built and established. We're talking about various micro exchanges here as interactions, but not only between humans, as would be the case, for example, with service marketing, where have various touch points, for example, in a bank or in a, uh, with an airline between humans and machines at the same time, which calls for a more expanded model. Uh, this is the case with night glass. As you, uh, as you may remember, uh, I mentioned the case out of night glass uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that is the uh, opportunity of using this device for measuring the performance, for measuring biometrics. In this case, the consumer experience the creation of valuable outcomes with a mix of applications, task points, and uses. Well, the organized adapter, that is the firm, co creates environments with consumers. So it's not just, uh, let's say, a basic device for measuring uh, your blood pressure, it's also a device that creates an entire lifestyle around you by feeding back your metrics into your actual activities and allowing you to become better. Uh, every day. So we're interacting with the, with, the, with the device itself, which assumes uh, exactly the same position as would be a trainer in a gym, for example. Uh, this is where we're talking about the Internet of Things. And of course, you have the ability to take pictures at the same time as you train, to uh, notify your improvement in, so in social media, uh, in a uh, small community of nightclubs users. So it's a whole new consumptive ethos where brands build not simply uh, and not in several stages between communications, usage, and between firm and consumers, but between firm devices and consumers themselves. And this is the uh, digitalized interactive platform uh, as described by BIB. And it's one way of accounting nowadays uh, of uh, why brands are still important. However, loyalty and trust do not stem directly from firm control activities, but from activities that may uh, have a source in uh, other consumers, but also in devices. Um, so one generation in this context continues to be continuous, however, in joint space of interactual value creation between engaging consumers and the social networks and organizing actors, that is, the firm and its organizational ecosystem. The characteristics of DIP are okay to process goods, that is, we don't consume either product or service, but a process tool, we consume the process. 
That is uh, coterminous with the profiles of the manners and suppliers in a network of revolving relations that articulates supply and demand as a result of the collective, collaborative, and dynamic series of transformations and adaptations within design, production, circulation, and consumption. Again, this is an environment where the uh, need divided lines between what is design and what is uh, uh, production and who consumes what uh, is not as clear cut as, as, a, as was the case with the traditional uh, brand particular okay. uh, So, in this context, optimize uh, goods and services. Uh, we don't um, have to follow the we cannot follow anymore the fixed uh, set of features and attributes which were at the very bottom of the equity pyramid prior to being uh, uh, transforming benefits and then attributes. But there has been a shift in locus of control uh, from uh, marketers as orchestrators of goods and services to the configuration of VIP offerings between these three agents that is, machine, humans, and uh, consumers and firms. And the outcome of uh, this uh, long process and uh, continuous of uh, uh, interaction in a web to one environment has resulted and has facilitated the emergence of the dominant mode of planning for web to all that is co creation. Now, what does cooperation mean? Um, the large number of social media channels uh, by the consumers can reduce the amount of control that a brand can exert of its meaning. And this is exacerbated by the fact that experiences and stories are being shared in social media, thus further decreasing the ability of brand marketers to control conversations. So, as you can see on the uh, right hand graph, the uh, coalitions of uh, firm-generated brand meaning, of consumer-generated brand meaning, and of uh, stories that circulate in mass media uh, from influences, for example, have resulted in the predicament of co-creative brand meaning, which is the dominant way of accounting for meaningfulness as a brand criteria. As you may report, meaningfulness is one of the main criteria alongside the adaptability, transferability that you have to analyze uh, also in your assignment. Uh, why does it, is it meaningful and for whom? Uh, if you want to use uh, social media community, you have to draw, for example, specific posts in you know, order to show uh, why, for example, there was an opportunity for your decision to launch this uh, particular brand or some brand, uh, and so on and so forth. The co-creation uh, is a bit of a big branding uh, by now. It's benefits for marketers is on one, on the one hand, there are strengthened uh, relationships between marketers and various stakeholders. The marketer may obtain valuable technical information more easily. And consumers may gain a stronger brand experiences. However, the downside, there are also heterogeneous and negative interpretations of the brand, not necessarily aligned with what is projected by a brand, which leads to brand evolution, the brand image evolution, for example, progressively uh, losing its meaning and its touch with consumers, because there are so many free floating you know, adaptations of meaning that uh, you don't really know what it's up for. And this is a problem because the main uh, associated territory uh, you are moving into must be capable of furnishing a differential advantage in intangible terms. The more many proliferates, the less a brand is capable of sustaining this differential advantage, and thus it loses much of its strength. Uh, Co-creation has been dimensionalized in various manners in the academic literature. Uh, this is the most recent, at least in my knowledge, literature review paper uh, that has been published, uh, that was published in journal of research this year by Sir 
uh, such as Russo, Riegel, and Kovacs. Uh, four main things were identified about population. The first is interaction uh, in terms to business to consumer, business to business, but also consumer to business. The second one concerned interaction only uh, between consumers. And finally, influencing without interaction, again, across uh, pairs of consumers and brands. How do we measure appropriation? Um, first of all, uh, we uh, the measure creation as such with some sort of contact, sorry, contract. We measure the interaction or the way uh, influences uh, influence the peers to follow them, to share the content and so forth. So, for example, uh, um, pertinent metric would be the ratio between uh, uh, followers, uh, posts, and it's sharing in uh, Facebook or its retweets in Twitter. Uh, who initiates and who participates in co-creation? I guess it's important, a very important dimension. Marketers, there are four, three main ways of approaching uh, this uh, initiation of move. Uh, first, either a certain way initiated by marketers without the participation of consumers. Second, a certain way initiated by stakeholders or consumers. And finally, marketers as not being initiators but facilitators of co creation. And finally, but it's a corner of co creation for whom? Uh, marketing sphere uh, is for some studies the locus uh, of uh, co creating branding strategy. For us, for the uh, majority of studies, uh, this locus is a joint sphere. Uh, and appropriate brand meaning. Uh, this is not the province of what world, this also holds for fiscal environments. Now, what do we mean by uh, interaction between brands and consumers? Uh, this is the first rule of dimensionalizing uh, co creation. Uh, marketers take other interactions, influence from uh, the pathway of my influence is that they is from one part to another. For example, uh, from B2B to B2B or, or from uh, C2B to C2B. Uh, this, is, uh, this mode has been identified in 7% uh, of the uh, analyzed studies. Uh, on the other hand, interaction among stakeholders without the participation of consumers were identified in 47% of studies. Uh, for example, France about 2015 noted that in CLB settings, direct interaction might include participating in online competition of product improvement. And whereas was in the consumer settings uh, are characterized by in indirect operation. That may include the customer that includes the brand with other customers, friends, and family and other networks. Some of those consider direct market with stakeholder interaction a prerequisite for appropriation, suggesting that appropriation and branding apply to a direct intentional dialogue or collaboration between the marketer and stakeholders. And finally, Ramaswamy Ram and Oxan, as well as UNL. Are the cooperation of peers and proposed to create platforms for migrant stakeholder engagement supports? Um, the next way of theorizing cooperation is uh, yes, brand to interact with consumers, but without influencing them. In this case, some articles place less emphasis on market stakeholder interaction. While suggesting cooperation of pairs to influencing among consumers. This article further introduced the cost of collaborative creation, implying that stakeholders may playfully or even in a technical manner cooperate or could destroy their meanings. And most studies on cooperation brought meaning or collecting the deal line again. And especially in the topics of our communities. 
Finally, the dimension of market initiated appropriation. Uh, as an example, marketers may initiate the creation of an estimate still feedback for the brands, or where there's, there were well new ideas for new brands, but for new brand names. So we now always expand, for example, our presence in, in, a, in a chain, but also the brand itself through uh, program coordinator may uh, seek um, new ways of uh, publicizing the brand. In all our context, marketers may initiate creation by both stakeholders creating brand content, or by platforms such as brand websites, social media accounts, Rosal, Zione, and so forth. These are all central figures in this respect. And finally, uh, we have the case of neither introducing uh, the creative platform uh, nor controlling it, but of facilitating the creation, in which case marketers may encourage consumers to interact with them and with them and other bankers in transparency and access to co-creation platforms. For brand narratives, seeing a song book, we take others as storytellers and marketers as persons to these stories in relation to the original speak. Uh, for example, the Northern Bronze to Bradley. In a very quote from a lecture one, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the model, the narrative group model, uh, consists of uh, outer layers and an inner kernel. And the more we move to the outer layers, the more we found uh, all sorts of uh, imaginary storytelling approaches that at the end of the day uh, attempt to generate more peripheral but uh, very useful pronunciations. Now, this sums up. This of brand equity, sorry, brand communications. So let's take a quick five minute break and let's recommend it 10 or 7.